Thank you. Just as we wait for the children to go, uh, we've got some notices. Let's start with the notices. They're always good. Uh, so I have got them somewhere. Here we go. So some of you will know that we are updating the electoral roll. Uh, there are forms in the back. If you would like to um, be part of the electoral roll, then please do take a form and fill it and then leave it with um, either Tony or myself or Robert or Margaret. That would be great. Um, the other notice is that on a Wednesday, the huddle um, is now meeting in the church but this is an open invitation to anyone who wants to join in. Uh, we're doing a series on learning to hear God's voice. Uh, we believe that God is alive and wants to speak to each one of us individually. Uh, he wants to speak words of hope and challenge. And if you want to learn how to hear his voice, then come on a Wednesday at 8 p.m. in church. We'll be meeting here and watching a video and having a time of extended worship. Uh, to, to just praise him and listen actively. So these are our two notices. Um, there, is, there is one face that I'm not familiar with. So hello, welcome. I'm Catherine. <laughs> I'm Richard's wife. Richard is the vicar here. Um, some of you will have already received Richard's email. Has anyone not received Richard's email? Okay, Simon, um, if you would like to be on Church Suite, that's how we communicate to most people, could you um, let me know at the end? So uh, my husband has got uh, a cold. He's just got a cough. No other symptoms, but because of the Department of Health guidelines, anyone with mild symptoms has to uh, stay at home for seven days. Uh, thank you so much for the cards and the gifts. You are incredibly kind. I hope this doesn't encourage him to have coughs on a frequent <laughs> basis. Um, he's well and he is, uh, uh, my grace is running low, so I do need a filling, Holy Spirit. Um, but he is well and he thanks you warmly. Um, so I shall read, in fact, Simon, what I'll do is I'll give you this um, letter and you can read it in your own time. Uh, but he, it just explains that he's self-isolating, but he says, uh, I'm writing to you this morning, recognizing the present coronavirus outbreak is causing great concern for some, but for others it may be frustrating and you may feel that you're not affected by it. Whatever you may be feeling, I believe we are in a significant kairos or opportune moment as a nation and as Christians as we are faced with the opportunity to shine the light of Jesus in the world around us. We will have to adapt to living differently as we take precautions, but somehow, by his grace, carry Jesus into every situation we face. So, um, we are committed to talks on Sunday mornings for as long as we are permitted to do so. So we will continue to meet here. We have taken extra precautions by putting sanitizer at the front on the left-hand side wall, and we do welcome you, well, actually we ask you, please, to sanitize when you come in and when you leave. There are many vulnerable members of the community in this particular congregation, and if you are not worried about it yourself, and you think it's all a lot of um, hype, do it just as a, as a way of honoring others. Um, we want to keep each other safe. We are trying to distance one another a little bit, if possible. Um, sadly, the Church uh, of England have now said that no refreshments should be served to minimize cross-infection. Uh, if you have any mild symptoms, you're asked not to come to the gatherings, and um, pastoral visits will be given, provided there's no symptoms. So I'm really sorry it's a health and safety announcement, but I need to keep you updated as we are kept updated by the Central Church. Exactly, Simon. Saying that, Simon, we do live in a world where the world is narrating one thing and there is a narrative of fear and of social separation and distancing, yet we are called to be family in this season um, of uncertainty and, and, and we do need to rethink how do we do the up, in and out church in this season where we may not be able to meet for much longer as a larger group. You know, we are being forced to scatter, actually, 
And we've been praying for a move of God for years, years and years, generations have been praying for a move of God. Little did we know that this may well be it, that this may well be our opportunity to step out as Christians and be saying a different narrative to the one that the media are saying, one where we can shine a light and point people to Jesus. And actually, there's no better time to tell people about Jesus than now when everything seems to be so vulnerable at the moment. We know that the one thing that doesn't change and that will not fail us is Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Richard's going to be so sad he missed today. Okay, so I'm really excited. Um, we, <clears throat> we're going to continue into worship. Really excited about this being an opportunity for us to rethink how to do up in and out as a church. And um, the other thing is that we, we can't do the peace But we do need to look out for one another. That does not change. We are still committed 100% to one another. So what I'd like you to do is ask your neighbor, who preferably isn't a member of your family, if they have the number of someone else in church, should you need to self-isolate so that people can be checking in with you and providing food and supplies if you need. There should be not one individual in this church who doesn't have someone that they can call on in this church. So can I ask you now to turn to your neighbor or, and, and say, have you got the phone number of someone in church that you could phone and say, I'm in self-isolation, please can you get me some milk and bread and some, some food? If they don't have a number, would you be willing to give your number? Would that be okay? So can I just give you five minutes? Yeah. Be, be wary of social distancing, but do go and find out if, if people have got community. Okay, if I can just gather you back together. So Jackie and Chris are now handing out these leaflets. Okay, I'm just going to ask you to stop you to finish your conversations if possible, Simon. <laughs> Simon and Sue, thank you. <laughs> it's all right. Love you. So um, these these are uh, you can have one here. Thank you. So these are forms that we are handing out to everyone, and on them it says, "Hello, if you are self-isolating, I can help." Okay, so we're rethinking about doing the up the in and the out. We've talked about the in and looking out for one another. The team are going to meet to to try and set up a system so that if anyone is in self-isolation, they let the church know so that we can be praying for you and making sure your needs are met. The out bit is um, that actually we need to be stepping out and meeting our neighbors and being willing to post this through their letterbox to say, this is who I am and I'm happy to help you if you're in self-isolation. Please give me a call if you have any needs. Even maybe you want to offer to pray for them. You know, there isn't a spiritual box here, but maybe you'd like to offer to pray for them if they, if they want prayer. Yeah? In your area, did you say you might get beaten up? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I think you do have to use your discernment, Simon. That's, that's wise. But I think also let's, uh, let's extend kindness to people and then it's up to them whether they say yes or not. Okay. Um, the most important bit, though, that I haven't spoken about is obviously the up. And that's where we need to begin. Um, we have been, uh, you know, very <clears throat> uh, privileged to be able to just come on a Sunday, every Sunday, some of you meet in smaller groups where you feel fed in a corporate context and where uh, there are brilliant preachers sharing what they feel God is saying. We are all going to have to practice the presence of God individually now and dig deep on an individual level. What is it to actually have time with God alone? What is it to be still and be in his presence, to really feed that relationship of the up? And if some of you don't really know where to begin, please, we have a chat with with someone. They're they're brilliant apps with lots of really good talks uh, and people that are really, uh, that love to pray and they would be able to help you to develop your prayer life too. So that's the blurb on Corona. 
We're going to re-enter worship and we're going to lift our eyes now from what the world sees to what God says. And um, I'm going to pass over to you. Yeah, I don't know about you, but um, this week I felt quite um, hopeless, um, feeling quite sort of overwhelmed. Uh, Carl is very keen to listen to the news, and we have an Alexa, so he just walked into the lounge and goes, Alexa, what's the news? And of course, the only story is coronavirus. And it, it sometimes feels like it's sort of, you know, putting a real um, kind of burden on top of your, your mind and your thoughts. Um, we were planning a holiday, and it's like, oh, do we, you know, do, we do that? And um, yeah, I just felt God say, actually, we need to sing songs of hope. We need to really hold on to the hope that we have. Um, and that takes kind of, that takes guts, actually, because the narrative, like uh, Catherine was saying, is of fear and of kind of doom and gloom. Um, so I think this time of worship, if you could kind of, you know, let the fire burn with inside you of kind of, you know, raising your hope and, you know, holding on to that hope just to kind of fill you up. Um, it's incredible to think that, yeah, we might not be able to meet like this. Um, you know, if this was the last time you could worship God, what would that look like? I don't mean that in a morbid sense. I mean that in a, just how would you come to God? I mean, like you said, sometimes we live life very comfortably. We just think, oh, the next thing's going to happen. But actually, we're called to give God everything. Let's just worship him. Let's stand in this place and declare the things that we believe in. Thank you. Amen. I'm going to invite Margaret up to do the reading. For those of you who don't know who Margaret is, she's the wonderful wife of Robert Pym, who uh, they, they both lead um, Ascension Church, and I think your title is Team Vicar of the Marlbrook Team. <laughs> I, I always get worried about these things. Don't yes, VIP, and of course the wife is always uh, the, the strong supporter, so here you go. Mm-hmm. Okay, Um, so we've got uh, two readings this morning. So um, it's funny how God's word comes alive at um, to some words jump out at us. So listen and look out for words which God is making alive to you. Okay, so the first reading is from Psalm 69 verses 1 to 3 and 15 to 16. Save me, O God, for the floodwaters are up to my neck. Deeper and deeper deeper I I sink into the mire. I can't find a foothold. I am in deep water and the floods overwhelm me. I am exhausted from crying for help. My throat is parched. My eyes are swollen with weeping, waiting for my God to help me. Don't let the floods overwhelm me, or the deep waters swallow me, or the pit of death devour me. Answer my prayers, O Lord, for your unfailing love is wonderful. Take care of me, for your mercy is so plentiful. And the second reading is from Luke, chapter 12, verses 4 to 7. Jesus said to those listening, Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you after that. But I tell you, I... Um, But I'll tell you whom I fear. Fear God, who has the power to kill you and throw you down into hell. Yes, he's the one to fear. What is the price of five sparrows? Two copper coins? Yet God does not forget a single one of them. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God. Then a whole flock of sparrows. So, there we go. So, just a moment to think. <laughs> Thank you. Robert, do you want to come and join us? Robert, I don't think you need any introduction. I do. Yeah. 
do. Come nearer. Thanks. Have you noticed how much you touch your face? Have you? <laughs> I do it all the time. Uh, Rich did ask me to speak originally on go into all the world, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching to obey everything I've commanded you. Well, this is a new opportunity to roll up your sleeves and be out. And me, all of us, to be out, making disciples in ways you never thought you would. So I need to clear the decks. coming I've got this to remind me <coughs> can you hear me all right you sure yeah okay this is headed in time of trouble the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases your mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Great is your faithfulness. Now that's what I'm singing as I wash my hands at the moment. And it takes about 20 seconds. You may want to think of another worship song, one of the ones we sang this morning. Just work it out and sing that instead of Happy Birthday or whatever. Not a bad suggestion, actually, but there's better ones. The words were written by the prophet Jeremiah in a book called Lamentations. And the clue is in the title. He saw the devastation of his own people people eating each other. The city ransacked, many dying, many sent off into exile. It was terrible, terrible times. And he wrote that. His heart broke, but he also said, when I discovered your words, I devoured them. They are my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name. O Lord God of heaven's armies. Some wanted him to be silent, not to speak the Lord's name. But he was, his heart was so full of what the Lord said, he couldn't keep the words in. You may not feel very full of it. He was. He said this too, but if I say I'll never mention the Lord or speak in his name, his word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones. I'm worn out trying to hold it in. I can't hold it in. If any of you want to go away and read Jeremiah, as Margaret said, things take on a new perspective when you hear things. Just amazing. Uh, Richard, as I said, wanted me to speak on discipleship, about becoming those who nurture others to become disciples. And under the out heading, he said he wants us all as Christians to be contributors, not just consumers. Or as church leaders, become equippers, not experts at doing it all. And overall, that we grow increasingly into the character and competency of Jesus. Good stuff, Richard. It takes a new edge now. These are testing times, folks. A moment, the phrases have already been used, when we need to dig deep into the trust we place in our good Father in heaven. We had all the clergy of Bath together this week, and I happened to have the privilege of leading that time. And I said to them, we need to learn again what it is truly to trust God. 
not on the many other props we've been grown used to relying on. Clearly, I'm talking to myself as well, but the area Dean said to after, I'm really glad you cut through the guff, because that's what it's about. And we read that passage from Luke's Gospel. They're reading set by the Church of England for in time of trouble. We very rarely use it. What is the price of five sparrows, two copper coins? Yet God does not forget a single one of them, and the very hairs on your head are all numbered, so don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. And I ask the clergy, do you believe that about yourself? Do you believe that? you are worth more the very number of your hairs on your head are numbered God's compassion is immense let us rediscover it pray we may see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living again as the Psalms say by that I mean pray that God's love and goodness may be seen among us even in the middle of great difficulty and grief now, I don't know how that will happen as it goes along. I really don't. But I prayed with Margaret last night, Lord, show your goodness among us, for you're the expert at doing that. We are not the experts. He is. And others who've lived in difficult times in other parts of the world and so on have said this, the Lord's goodness comes when you are not. He surprises us. We're not expecting it, but it's his goodness, not ours. Another hymn then, I won't sing this time. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Who knows that one? Quite a few of you. We often sing it on Mothering Sunday actually for obvious reasons. Now I sort of heard of the background of this one how it was written, because it sounds all very jolly, doesn't it? Actually, it wasn't written in jolly times, quite the opposite. Here is Wikipedia on the background. Martin Rinkart was a Lutheran minister who came to Eilenburg in Saxony, that's modern Germany, at the beginning of the Thirty Years' War. Thirty years, no? The walled city of Eilenburg became the refuge for political and military fugitives, but the result was overcrowding and de deadly pestilence and famine. Armies overran it three times. The Rinkart home was a refuge for the victims, even though he was often hard-pressed to provide for his own family. During the height of a severe plague in 1637, Rinkart was the only surviving pastor in Eilenburg, conducting as many as 50 funerals a day. He performed more than 4,000 funerals that year, including that of his wife. And he wrote that song. How could he? I read it closely. Again, I've never read it this closely. He didn't say that God blessed anyone with wealth or health or a comfortable home or a nice car, all that stuff. No, he said, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. I reckon he discovered the gifts in that time of the Lord's love which no one can take away, and those gifts were still his today when he wrote it. May we find the Lord's love. So let us lament away. The scriptures tell us, and we're not used to it, when bad things happen, lament, weak, even shout. The Bible's full of it, it's just we haven't noticed. Just in the last few days, I've really noticed, as Margaret said, um, and this word, it came, it's been used in, anybody using the Lent booklet, Care for God's Creation? Just a few of you, yeah. Well, yesterday, Friday, what was the headline? Overwhelmed, question mark, exclamation mark. Seemed very timely, and they didn't even know it would be. It was written about uh, creation, um, you know, e uh, climate things and all that. And then those verses which Margaret read, Save me, O God, from the flood, for the flood waters are up to my neck. My eyes are swollen with weeping, waiting for my God to help me. 
don't let the floods overwhelm me or the deep waters swallow me or the pit of death devour me. Lament is about actually expressing your fears. It is not about pushing them somewhere. Answer my prayers, O Lord, for your unfailing love is wonderful. It's about saying to the Lord, Lord, answer. Take care of me, for your mercy is so plentiful. Just this morning, another one from Psalm 94. Unless the Lord had helped me, I would soon have settled in the silence of the grave. I cried out, I am slipping, but your unfailing love, O Lord, supported me. When doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. Do you see the honesty of it? So when the fears come upon you, if you feel overwhelmed, as the old hymn goes that my mum asked for at her funeral, take it to the Lord in prayer. Cry out to him with all honesty and receive his love. But in all our lamenting, let us also hear what was recorded of Job in chapter 1 of that book. It was too hard even to read to the clergy, the man who lost everything. Area Dean also said, I'm glad you didn't read that. This is the last line of the first chapter, though. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. Now that be, you'll get people shouting at you, say, what's God done? That's what they'll say. No, Job hung on to the one God. He did not charge the Lord with wrong, though his friends told him should, he should, all kinds of stuff. Let's not just lament, but find the goodness of the Lord too and share it with others. Yesterday, the Archbishop of Westminster, Vincent Nichols, said this. There are two great commandments we have rooted in our Judeo-Christian heritage in this country. Love your neighbor as yourself and honor your father and mother. Interesting. So in the name of the goodness of the Lord, as many have said already, who we have known, let us set out to share that plentiful mercy, that renewed hope and cheer with others and indeed our families. Love your neighbor as yourself and honor your father and mother. I see you've already got the little sheets out. We're planning a similar thing at Ascension to help each other do just that, the contact details and making sure everybody's got uh, contact support within the church family, but of course outside as well. I'd written here, I'm sure Richard will be encouraging you to do just the same. And there you are, you've already done it. This is one of the bits that Richard asked me to speak on original, originally. And this just seems to capture many things uh, for today from Ephesians. It's headed living by the Spirit's power. Just listen, as Margaret said again, just let the words hear them. So, Ephesians 5, 15 to 21. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. That get out of the boat thing I said earlier. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. You can get praise music as well on your apps and what have you, or just sing it as you wash your hands, as I said. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks to God for everything. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So let us learn to trust the Lord again. Let us lament away and call out to the Lord, but let us again discover the love and goodness of the Lord. Let us set out as Christ's disciples to share the goodness and love of the Lord with our neighbor and our families. I use the prayer now that we used at the clergy gathering, the prayer for in time of trouble. Let us pray. Almighty God, Almighty God, 
you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that because of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Give to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And I sing again. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Your mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you, Robert. Well, we're going to close the service with um, another song, and we would like to offer you the opportunity to get prayer ministry, if that's something that you would like. Um, can I ask the prayer team, please, to refrain from lay the laying of hands um, as we've been directed by the Central Church? But if I could just ask um, the prayer team to uh, come to the side and this is really an opportunity to respond to what Robert has said perhaps uh, lamenting is not in your nature some people are better at it than others <laughs> and maybe this is a, a time where actually we're having to surrender and realize that this is bigger than ourselves and um, so maybe in this time why, why don't we just use this time as a moment to surrender uh, our fears and our worries and the things that we've been trying to control um, and allow God to fill us with his perfect love as he sends us out to share that with those in our communities. <laughs> 